Welcome to the Dirty Sports Podcast. I'm Andy Ruther, coming to you live from the Smut Shack in Venice Beach, California, with my co-host, Joey No Chill Prano. Hello, Andy, and only Andy. It's quiet in here tonight. No sounds of beers cracking and interns pissing and episodes being lost. <laughs> because uh, I fired Trevor. So you fired him this weekend. I did. It, it, you know what's surprising about all this? You made the call, not me. Well, you know, th- you're always you were always too hard on the guy when he didn't do anything wrong, and then when he did do something wrong, I had to step in and make an executive decision, and that's how he knew it was for real. I was like, "Look, you fucked up." You got to turn in your wings. You know what's amazing about last episode's disaster of... And sadly, after, like, within minutes of him winning Dirtball Madness, it was it was almost like a foreshadowing. It was like it was the Dirtballs voted him the winner of Dirtball Madness, almost as, like they were calling him back to being a Dirtball. It's like really shouldn't win Dirtball Madness if you're the intern. Yeah. And now you're not the intern. Uh, rip in peace, Trevor. Well. Still love the kid. Last episode, as you guys know, we lost over about two hours of audio. And Mostly the, you complaining about Xavier basketball. But, true. But a little NBA talk, well, a little Odell Beckham talk. I was going to say, there, there's some good bits in there. Again, you can go on the YouTube for a very raw audio However, the beginning of that show, he's messing with the vape pen, and what did you say to him? Yeah, it's it's, it's ominous in the pre-show. I said, focus on the, the sound and the video. Well, there you go. Look, man, I'll now just— he's got his weekends and his weekdays off to hang out with the weekend. Rip Trevor! <laughs> So if anybody wants to run sound and the camera on the Mevo, uh, if you yeah, if you're within uh, a few hours drive of L.A. and haven't ever called Andy Ruther a douche to his face, uh, <laughs> there's intern opportunities. I actually don't even care if you called me a douche. Just know what you're doing. I just need someone who can handle the responsibility. So you're fine. Mapadoti wants to come in and be the intern. No, not him. Oh. That's what I was. That's what I was insinuating. Because he he sent me because so he called you a douche to your face. He also sent me some long DM how he was done with dirty sports, which then to me says, well, I'm done with you. I I, I don't need these 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 proclamations. Some, some hot dirtball drama to start the show. No, there's no drama. I just don't need hot proclamations. Yeah. You, see, you don't listen to Dent Report. We kind of went into it, and and Maddie had a whole thing that said I need to open my DMs and be nicer. And I sat there and I listened respectfully, but I also respectfully disagree. Okay. I, I posed this question. I just said, what's more of my time? And you, I think you'd agree with me. Is my time better responding to every little DM or saying, hey, let's work on this video or work on pulling this clip or booking something or, or a guest? Uh, or freeing up some memory on the, uh, on the Zoom memory card. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You get it. Yeah. I tried to fire you, but you wouldn't have it. I was like, look, you just have to leave your apartment twice a week while I come in and sit on your couch alone and record Dirty Sports Podcast. But you were like, it's my apartment and it's all my equipment. And I was like, fine. Were you here this weekend, you're, by the way? Uh, I was. I popped in. I knew it. Cause yeah. I was gone this weekend because I noticed I have different chargers for my bird scooters. Oh, did you notice that? I did, because they were wrapped up. Yeah. Well, I I got you more chargers. Uh, I I call I did the bird thing because I'm I'm trying to get you more chargers because I know you want more no, chargers. No, 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 no. Let's just fess up. You saw I was making some money charging scooters. But I'm already I already was like I can't do this. No, you you already got chargers. You're in on this game. Yeah, but I can't I can't do it. You can have my chargers. Now you have six. I've actually got my brother getting you chargers. Like. I, I've already decided this is going to be the bird lair. You can charge it all. <laughs> Just kick me kick me back 10 bucks a weekend for all your chargers. Wait a second, Prano. Yeah. So 
because I can't. I don't understand how you do it. These bird things, they're everywhere. It's just, it's just too much. I, I was already like, okay, this is interesting, and I was like, no, it's not. And you, and I was like, oh, he'll have Trevor's help. He could use three more chargers. And then I was like, well, Trevor's been fired, and uh, I guess Ruther's on his own. Trevor went out with me the other day, actually. I know. I heard you guys had a you had a bird day. We 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 bonded that was before you realized that the shit was gone, right? Or was that the the episode before? No, I I got home as far as the Chargers. As far oh. as the episode being Yeah, gone. yeah, yeah. That was before. We bonded. We got picked up scooters. I ordered us some Mexican food. Tequila, of course. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm a little disappointed because I What's thought- a bigger flip-flop, Tequila or Manziel? I, it was, which That's is, a great which question. Which is a bigger flip-flop? You yelping that you were going to burn down their restaurant because they don't have burritos to now it being your go-to restaurant. After you had like gotten Plancha's tacos tattooed across your back, or you saying Johnny Manziel will be a pro bowler, and now literally trashing Johnny Manziel anytime somebody named Johnny or football is in the news. I think probably Manziel. Here's my thing with Tokoya. Tokoya, Takaya, how's it pronounced? Who knows? Anyway. I didn't write the Yelp review. I believe it was Will Kallenbach who threatened to burn the place down. Right, right. Oh, man, like, just run your car through it, bro. <laughs> 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 Lots of inside dirtball jokes today. Anyway, they they flip flop themselves. Remember when the restaurant opened? So, guys, this is the little organic Mexican place directly across the street from where I live. When they opened, they didn't serve burritos. Yeah, but you were also like, no one needs fucking organic, expensive Mexican food. Mexican food's supposed to be crap. True. It's supposed to stick like shit. It's supposed to give you diarrhea. True. It's you were so like, good. if they had burritos, I would eat there. Uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. I can admit when I flip flopped, it's delicious. <laughs> you should have to wear the L chain every time you go to get tacos. I can do that. <laughs> I have no problem. That'd be great. I'll I'll pick up burritos, tacos, wearing the L chain, and they won't know what that means. That's a good. That's a good question, though. What is a bigger flip flop? I want to say Manzel. I mean, I was drunk one night in Cincinnati arguing about Manzel. This is before Dirty Sports. You were arguing that he's going to be good. Yeah, my brother was like, "Dude, you were." I almost beat the fuck out of you last night. <laughs> he's like, "We're getting pizza at three a.m." I think it was at R- Ramundo's. Ramundo's. Ramundo's in uh, Hyde Park in Cincinnati. And uh, after the bars closed, my brother was like, "You're so fucking annoying. You're all about Manzel." Yeah. Which brother was this? Greg. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. Well, we got some sports to talk, Andy. We do. Got a lot Baseball's of sp- here. Did you watch any baseball this weekend? You watch any Reds baseball? Yeah, they're 0-3. Yeah. Jesus hot Christ. Start. No surprise there. No pitching. Did you hear uh did you hear the Reds fan today scream overrated at Bryce Harper literally seconds before he hit a fucking bomb of a homer? Yeah. State of Cincinnati sports right there, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's like, over oh, fuck. Who is yelling overrated to Bryce Harper? I don't know. I don't know. Cheddar dicks. What are you doing, man? He probably had a bowl of chili in his fucking lap. I mean, that's not a good representation of my city. Yeah, that was, that was a tough one. I mean, literally, the pitch was on its way when he yelled overrated. Not to Maybe mention. Maybe somebody was watching somebody eat a bowl of Skyline and was just yelling at them. Just seemed like they were yelling at Bryce Harper. Not to mention... Cincinnati has awful pitching. Like, that's not the team you want to be yelling at. Yeah. If you have a good pitching staff, maybe. Also, he had hit a homer in the game. Exactly. before that. It just goes to the, to, the, to the point we have of just fanboys just being stupid. Yeah. Bryce Harper's a douche. I don't, think anybody's, yeah. I don't think anybody's arguing that. But he's not overrated. No. He's pretty fucking good. No. And he's still, like, 26 or something like that, right? Young guy. Yeah. Yeah. You, I know you were watching baseball. I did. I watched a lot of baseball this weekend. Watched all three Mets games. Watched a little uh, of the Yankees Blue Jays series. Watched a little of the uh, Houston Texans Texas series. Uh, I was watching. I was all over. Watched a little Giants Dodgers. I the Dodgers like fuck you that you can't watch your games anywhere. Like I was watching that in a bar. I was like, oh, I'll check in on the Dodgers. Like Ooh. you can watch them here. Yeah, because I have cable. Cause you have cable. Um, well, we should explain that to people who don't live here. Yeah. So the Dodgers and the Lakers are with. It's an exclusive to Time Warner Cable Spectrum, right? Spectrum. Yeah. So they have their own channel, and they've had this for a few years. So if you're an L.A. resident who has Direct TV, I think like the Shabelli family, yeah, you can't watch Dodgers games. Yeah. 
It's so stupid. I don't get that. Yeah, I don't get it either. But it's what? It's probably a multi-billion dollar deal. I'm right? sure, but still, like usually you have a regional sports network. It's not tied to a specific yeah. company. Like, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I watched a little. I watched Otani pitch today against the. Uh, he the won, right? Didn't he give he, what? But six innings, three yard did. runs. Yep, yep. I saw a guy hit the sh- he the crush a ball off him, but he pitched pretty well. So Otani now, so he's their their third pitcher. In the rotation now, I guess yeah. I mean, unless unless they are, unless they played a four game series up there, but I don't think they did. I think that yeah, I think it, he was their third guy. They actually did. They played four. So yeah, because they took four. three or four from Oakland. Okay. So he's not batting; he's just pitching. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I didn't watch enough of it to know if they like, but I'm assuming they DH'd for him. Yeah. Because he didn't hit that well in spring training. So, I mean, he he's technically could be playing outfield for them as well. But today, I'm pretty sure he was just pitching and not hitting. He looked pretty good, though. We'll check him out. I know he said it. We'll do it. We'll, yeah. we'll go down to Anaheim for a game. Yeah, let's do it. I actually have uh, I have plans to go to hit a few ballparks that I haven't hit before. This is, this is going to be a summer I try to check some ballparks off my list. I already have plans to go up to Oakland. No fool. Just because I've never been. I've heard the Coliseum is shit, but it's like... And they'll, uh, I'm sure eventually they'll have a new stadium up there, but I haven't been. Yeah. I've always been around while they're having games. So I think I'm going to do Oakland this year. I think I'm going to do Seattle this year. Um, I think maybe I'll get uh, some East Coast. Might might try to hit Sky Dome. Toronto. Yeah. I know you're going to get those tickets, Joe. SeatGeek. SeatGeek. The only, where, where else would I get them? I bet if you go on SeatGeek now. Don't hold me to this, but I bet. If you go up to Oakland Coliseum. I checked on SeatGeek yesterday. You can sit literally 10 rows off the field for 25 bucks. That's what I was going to guess. Yeah. Like 20, 25 and bucks. That, and I was, looking at a, I was looking at a day game in May against the defending world champion Astros. And you can sit. You can see the defending world champs for 25 bucks field level. And what's great about that app is you can s- literally see – not just on a chart, but visually with pictures yep. where you're going to sit. So, guys, join Prano on his uh, Major League Baseball ballpark tour. Yeah. Well, at the end of the show, I'm going to tell you guys, I've, I've already booked a bunch of shows this summer, so I'll tell you what ballparks I'll be around. You guys can see shows at. Yeah, so go get those tickets on SeatGeek because right now all the Dirt Balls get $20 off their first SeatGeek purchase. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter our promo code Dirty Today. That's D-I-R-T-Y. Settings tab, click add a promo code, add the code. That's promo code DIRTY for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Now, you want to talk about something that happened, uh, you said, right before the show started with Brian Dozier? Well, I saw this. I was on I was on Twitter right before the show started, and I actually saw this when it happened because I did pop over to the end of the uh, Twins-Orioles game, and... I popped over to it, and they were the Orioles were down seven nothing in the ninth, and some kid I've never heard of, something Cisco was up, and they're shifting against him. He's a lefty. They're playing a super shift, and he bunts down the third baseline. Which, as a baseball guy, I'm like smart. You know, you're down. You're down seven. You just need you just need base runners. Yeah. You're, you know, you need you need six guys and a bomb. So. Any way you can get on base. And then I just saw right now on Twitter people complaining. Brian Dozier apparently post game is saying that it's like classless and he an unwritten baseball rule that this is something you shouldn't do. And he, he insinuated that he would have said something to him, but the Orioles have good veteran leadership, so they'll probably take care of it themselves. And I'm like. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, this doesn't have anything. To, now, there is a rule that you don't bunt to break up a no hitter. Like, that's ca- fuck all those rules, by the way. But that's like that's like. But, but this is OK. This is my one problem with baseball. My one big problem, I should say. And I know we've talked about it on the show before. These unwritten rules yeah. like. I don't even know what that means, because because if we're adapting, if every sport is adapting to the 21st century, to where we're at now. This whole, like, unwritten rule thing. You know, it's the same way with pimping out your home run. Right. But, again, there's there's no rule about not pimping your home run. There's just a rule that, like, we'll drill you after. 
which is like whatever. Which is fine, right? Yeah, which is fine. But there is I, – I, I do understand, like, you know, for the spirit of no hitters only happen so often and this guy's having the fucking day of his life and, you know, you're going up there trying to get a hit off him. It's like don't – don't, like – take the pussy way out because if a guy's pitching a no hitter against you it's probably not a, a much of a game anyway right like you have no hits so like what the if idea, it's one nothing right okay maybe and and you know it's a big game or whatever that's one thing but there's this idea that you don't you don't try to break up a no hitter by like sneak attacking a fucking bunt seven nothing you guys are the ones shifting like if you don't want somebody to bunt, why'd you shift? It's okay for you to like shift up seven nothing, but it's not okay for him to bunt up seven nothing. I think I like I was appalled to even see tweets about this. And I just like to say I like Brian Dozier. He's I think that led the league for second baseman in Homer since he arrived. He's a great player. He's an all star. He's a good guy. Fuck you, kill yourself. Yeah. Like, no. You're being a fucking pussy bitch. Honestly. I think it's kind of fucking soft sometimes that these guys shift as much as they do. So if you're going to shift, they're going to bunt against you. I couldn't disagree with him more. And honestly, I don't know who the fuck is agreeing with him. Well, again, this is my point with baseball is that if we used it in, let's say, basketball, it's the back in my day bullshit. You know, like back in my day, and but the, the, you know, Bill Lambeer would fucking take out Steph Curry. Where it's kind of the same, you you know who you see it every year is Goose Gossage. Right, but there is there is no back in my day rule here because no one was shifting five years ago. So this isn't like a this isn't an unwritten rule from yeah. the fifties. Okay, like no one's been shifting. You, people have started using these like crazy analytics and like shifting. You know, you'd see guys shift for like Poppy. You know, the big, the power hitting lefties. You see it going back five, six, seven years. But you didn't see it like every lefty who came up that was a pull hitter. We'd shift for them. Now you're seeing the Astros played four guys in the outfield at one point this weekend. Do you think with the shifting? So there is no unwritten rules about shifting. Do you think that the batters, because I feel like the batters are still behind with baseball. Do you think then they're going to adapt? Because if you're a guy who has, you know, they're going to shift for you to pull, right? Yeah. Let's say they shift. Let's say you're a lefty and they all shift to the right you know, to the right side of the field. At one point, do the batters just adapt and say, dude, I'm just going to hit it the opposite way? Well, there's, you know, first of all, if you're a dead pull hitter and then they're going to pitch you in because this is how they're attacking you, they want you to hit into that shift, it's pretty hard, you know, unless a guy makes a mistake, which, yeah. which has happened, where guys make a mistake and a guy flares one down the left field line and then suddenly, you know, there it is, it is a, a risky situation that you've seen with, Guys accidentally hit it the other way or or get lucky and hit it the other way or a pitcher makes a mistake and they drive the ball the other way where now something that would have been a single becomes a double or like in the Mets series uh, against the Dodgers, like uh, nobody's guarding third base because the third baseman's not playing over so you can take an extra base. It happens, but like the real way to attack it is exactly what this guy did. No one's over there. Just bunt. Yeah. Just fucking bunt. It's a, That's a line drive base hit in the scorebook. So... Just fucking bunt. And, and you know, some of these younger guys, it's they don't have the – like you see the veterans do it. Jay Bruce has taken advantage of it. Um, I've seen him do it a lot when they shipped on him because he, he knows what he's doing, and he can put it down a bunt. And this kid did it, and he fucking had the perfect bunt. And Brian Dozier is being a little fucking bitch, and I'm no longer rooting for Brian Dozier because he's a bitch. Bitch Dozier, I'm calling him from now on. So there you go. The, t he's, the twins, you're off my fucking rooting list. Bo, are you wearing a Bill Cosby sweater? I'm wearing a I'm wearing a cardigan. Because <laughs> you were hanging out with Tommy Dewey this weekend. That's why. I was. I did. I hung out with Tommy Dewey on Friday, and he was wearing a cardigan. It was very. Wait, he was wearing one out. Yeah, he went full casual. So he's probably wearing stuff from the set. Yeah. Well, how's, he, how's that work, by the way? If you're on set, can you just take the clothes home? Usually, no, but, you know, it's four seasons. Maybe he's got one he really likes and uh, didn't make the rotation or something. Yeah, I'm a little jealous. I, You know, Joe was telling me before the show, 
You, Tommy, and Tug hitting up the Venice scene. There was a, yeah, they had a whole crew with them. Tug was nice enough to uh, invite me to uh, meet up with them. The, he specifically, he was like, "Hey, are you working tonight?" And I was like, "No." And he's like, "Is Ruther in town?" I was like, "No." He's like, "You want to come meet us for beers?" So, I don't know. Sounds like he didn't want. Sounds like if you were here, maybe it w- the invite wouldn't have happened. I was gonna say because I did not get a text from Tug. We might need a, an Andy Ruther minute about Tug ignoring me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He didn't ask if you were here. He just asked if I was doing a show, and I said no. What the and fuck, said, Tug? Uh, maybe. I mean, he's on, you know. I'm just in, saying. Tug's in touch. He probably knew you were gone. True. He, he, he knew. He knew there was some personal thusting going on. And by thusting, I mean thusting, guys. <laughs> <laughs> in this case, I mean sex. That's what we're talking about. I thought you were going to visit your, like, friend's daughter or something like that. Do you have sex with your friend's daughter? No. But there no, you just lied directly to your co-host's face. I lied to you at first, and then I and then I came clean with you, because you know that's what friends do, right? I just you know I just I don't like getting analyzed all the time about you know my, because me and me, my girl situation. Let, we we don't want to get too into it because you never know who's listening to this. But can we can we just give a brief thing that happened? You matched with a girl on a dating app while you were in at spring training, correct? And then you flew back. To Thust. All weekend. That's, I mean. It's right out of the Ruther playbook. Yeah. It's also reckless behavior. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's reckless. <laughs> Brian Dozier thinks you broke <laughs> many unwritten rules. Well, Joe, if there was one word to describe Andy Ruther's dating slash sex life of the last 18 years, it would be reckless. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, it was reckless. Everything about it was reckless, but on a positive note, you got to find a silver lining. I was not asked my thoughts or opinion on pegging. Good, good. So, so I'm stepping up my game a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, I'm glad to be back, though. It's always good to be back, charging scooters. Back in the bird lair. <laughs> <laughs> I like that bird lair. I mean, Smut yeah. Shack and Smut Studio is good. Yeah, but, the Smut Lair. But I also like bird lair. Did you watch the Final Four? I watched the entire Loyola, Michigan game. Oh, and I watched tough one. I watched the first half of the uh, of the other game. Well, let's talk about the first game. Let's talk about Sister Jean. Yeah, I went to town on jokes with Sister Jean. That that happened. Even though I was thusting, I was like, I gotta take a break. I gotta watch these games. Sister Jean, and, and there's been some some controversy about because then people were saying she she did she left the game early. Right, but. She uh, went to their locker room or outside the she goes, players' yeah, area. Yeah, she goes on the. Uh, but apparently, she's been doing this forever. Oh, that's the news. That's what I read. Is she always win or lose would slide her little chair down the, you know, the runway or whatever, so that she could greet the fan. The she could greet the team coming off the court, uh, win or lose. Now, the way I heard that it was explained was, you know, in the regular season and also in the less um, massive games of this tournament, it's a lot easier for her to slide from her seat to the tunnel area um, without sort of being noticed and having a big hoopla. But obviously in San Antonio, I mean, and I hate that they do this, by the way. Can we stop with the putting it in such a big thing that the fucking coaches and and the rest of the players are like underneath the court and some sort of like, bunker like situation well that's they changed it i want to say about 15 years ago that was the new rule was that every final four would be in a dome right like, which, like they made that an official rule right which is fine but can we just have the fucking floor be the floor yeah why they do it vanderbilt style yeah because i think these stadiums are so big that they're catering to the first row of fans that would normally be sitting like if you're watching a football game, you're not courtside. You're up. Uh, you're up twenty feet. Yeah. So they've raised it so that those people have the closest view. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, fuck you. Put up bleachers or whatever. Did you hear the buzzer? Yes. It's ridiculous. It sounded like my 2000 Toyota Corolla. Yeah, it was your 2000 Toyota Corolla. They Elon Musked it up into the uh, <laughs> into the scoreboard. While you were gone this weekend, they took your car and it was up in the scoreboard. And some guy was just up there hitting your horn. Because I heard it, and for the, for the first few times, I thought someone kept honking outside where I was at. And it seemed like everyone on the internet did. Yeah. 
And then I realized, no, that's the buzzer in San Antonio. Yeah, it was awful. And Twitter was losing its mind. I'm sure. I'm sure all the social media. Yeah. Couldn't they have changed it in between games? No, I don't think they could have. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you could easily change the horn situation. That game was tough to watch, though. That first game. Why was it tough to watch? Because you were rooting for Loyola. Well, and lots of defense. It, it wasn't as exciting. Uh, Michigan, you know, I fell asleep during that game. So, yeah, I guess it was tough to watch, but I fall asleep during most college basketball games these days. But that German guy. Yeah. Wagner. You want to say Wagner, but it's Wagner. Yeah. Moritz Wagner. He I saw what was the stat? He was the first guy since Akeem Olajuwon in a final four to have 20 points and 15 or more rebounds. Yeah. They They couldn't stop the German guy. No. Yeah. He's beasting. Yeah. Yeah, he was uh he was the difference for sure in that game. Um, I was you know like I said I think everybody's rooting for Loyola, but I saw it I saw it in that er- like early in that game they were down then they went up and they went up big but it it was just it was just too much for them like I really felt like it was one of those situations where it was just like the moment is so big and then there's only so much like heart can do for you. And in the end, like you're playing in the final four, Michigan has the 15 best athletes on the court. Well, you know, they no, but they still they had they led most of that game. They basically but, lost their lead in the last seven minutes of the game. Right. But I but I felt like it was like a race. Yeah. Where it was going to catch up with them where like they were pacing themselves out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like a race. And like the end, Michigan was like, well, we can still go. And they're like, we're done. And and then it just was because they went from they went from ten points up in the second half to losing by what like eleven or something like yeah, that yeah something like twelve that. points yeah it's like a twenty point swing hey, over the Trevor course can of the you look up that score yeah oh wait you were fired never mind <laughs> you fired did you say it to him like that uh no it was I was a lot I was a lot more polite how mopey was he well I mean I didn't do it in person I broke up with him over the phone yeah, that's what I'm saying though yeah. like. Uh, you know, he was apologetic about the sound issues, and I, I told him, you know, it's just something that you got to think about when you move on to to greener pastures and, and what, what else you're going to do with your life. I'm like, think about think about this, you know, when you get your next gig that, you know, you really just got to you know, think about think about what you did and, you know, try to, try to grow from the situation. I'm like, you know, Andy likes to give you shit because you didn't get your, like, air conditioning fixed in 24 hours before I went to – Arizona, I was like, that was ridiculous. But this, you lost the whole episode, and I had to go back. I really made him feel bad about having to come back and be with you again. I'm like, when I leave, like, I don't want to see Ruther again for 72 hours minimum. Although you were over here again over the weekend when I wasn't here. Yeah, yeah. You snooping through some shit right Oh, now? yeah, man. I was dusting over here on my own. I was moving the bobbleheads around. I redecorated this whole wall, took it down, put it back up again. <laughs> so... Did you think I was going to notice, though? That's what I find hilarious. No, yeah, of course I did. I knew because you had your chargers under your under your little side table over here. Yeah, it hit me. I was like, wait a second. I have new scooter chargers? What was going on here? <laughs> By the way, apparently I have each other's keys for people who are not yeah. picking up on this. Yeah. We, could, we should just randomly do that to each other. Just pop in. Yeah. That, well, that's what I was thinking, too. I was like, I should rearrange a bunch of shit. Thank God you didn't have John with you. John would have, like, taken a shit in the middle of my fucking apartment. You'd be like, dude, that's where we recorded. Like, it's so funny, though. Yeah. But you'll find it on Monday. I'm going to jerk yeah, off. Yeah, it'll smell like shit when I come back <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> I'm going to jerk off all over the L chain. Picture it being in a turtle. Does he know we talk about him? No. He doesn't listen to no. this. No. Mikey will probably tell him. Mikey listens now. But does Mikey tell him? No, but but he way, probably will now. Why are why do our brothers come late? That's just like my little brother. Yeah, why do they come? I think s- Mikey just got into podcasting. By the way, you want to know? We had a savage text thread. My family had a savage text thread for Easter today. Yeah, that started out as like my mom wishing everybody a happy Easter, everybody going back and forth, and then my uh, my brother in law, my my sister's new husband, threw a, threw in like a a gif of Jesus shitting Cadbury eggs. And I was like, oh, boy, like he doesn't know that my mom's like kind of religious and this is not. And she literally replied. She was like, really? And like eye rolling emoji. And then literally John and Mikey just started getting in with like 
terrible like Easter memes. Like Mike uh, John posted one of like a, a girl trying to squirm out of the Easter bunny's arms, and it was and the the tagline was like, "Let's not turn this rape into a murder, shall we?" <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> It was hilarious. It just kept going. And then in the end, I was finally like, I just want to remind everybody that Tony started this. Like, (laughs) shout out to our new family member, Tony. Welcome to the fam. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. But it was was hilarious. I got to see what else Mikey put in there. Uh, Oh, at one point, my mom was like offended. Mikey threw in a Yoda. Offended you are? Off you must fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Your poor mom. Yeah. Dealing with. Oh, and my mom at one point goes. Take that down to, like, one of the ones John did. And John replied with, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Like, how do you take it down? It's a text thread. Who do you think gave your mom the most stress? Oh, John. John. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Like, doesn't even come close. Yeah. Not even close. I feel like Mikey probably got away with more because he's the baby. Or they just, you know, at that point. Yeah. Gabby got away. Gabby. Being the the only girl. The only girl and the baby. Oh, so Gabby's a baby. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Yeah. She got away with everything. She she was, like, totally spoiled. Like, spoiled rotten. Funny how all that works. Yeah. John's just a savage. I got to see him. It's been a minute. Yeah. yeah we'll see him soon, for sure. He's going to pop out from underneath the bed. <laughs> one, of, one of the trips that I'll be announcing in my list of shows is a return to the Bay Area. So, we might have to bring John back to the Tonga room. Oh my Hang god! Some vampires. <laughs> <laughs> what a night! I wonder if uh, a fucking fat Jason Kidd's still there. <laughs> yeah, he's he's still at the ballpark. He knows where our seats are. Ah, <laughs> oh, that'll that'll go on the the tales of creepy dirt balls. Yeah. Which, by the way, that that catalog is really growing. Oh man, the, of creepy dirt balls. Yeah. Every day, I feel, I feel like I meet a new one. Yeah. So Nova. Man, they looked good. Yeah. And actually, I, I saw that coming. Like, when who who they play to get to the Final Four? They played. Uh, God, who did they play? They played. But whoever they played, they won. Purdue? No, I forget who they played. But they won. West Virginia? They, yeah, it might have been. Well, West they played West Virginia in the Sweet 16. Yeah. Whoever they played in the Elite Eight, they won pretty handily, but also shot like shit. Oh, that's right. They didn't make it. Was, a lot it was of up. In, it was up in Boston. Uh, yeah. It was Texas Tech. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't shoot well. And they, they still won by like eleven. Yeah, they still won. And I was yeah. like, man, if they play like the the way they played and their shots fall. Like no one's gonna beat them. Well, you know, they, that's the thing. I, I've seen them a lot this year. They can shoot. They have NBA guys. You know, Charles Barkley's been on. Charles Barkley's wrong all the time, but he's been saying it all along. It's like as far as offensive power, no one in the country compares to them. They they play that the ball they basically play like a like a golden state they do though they play that yeah. type of offense yeah they're gonna spread the ball all those guys can shoot N- no team has as many guys that yeah. can shoot I mean honestly I, I've I've I, been, like I just don't see them losing to Michigan I could I don't, be wrong I, I don't see them losing either I've I've uh, I've been open about my lack of interest in college basketball but watching those two games back to back yesterday I'm like how how does Nova lose yeah but. Who knows? Michigan slows it down. They go to the big German. Yeah. He's he's just in the paint, blocking shots. Nine. Nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> he took out, nine. He took Not out, on my watch. He took out Bill Raftery. He took out his glasses. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. It was great. Yeah. I, I agree. With you. I saw the line. It opened at seven and a half, which was the biggest line since 2010, since a, uh, a Duke Championship I actually have a question. I would love to get a response on Twitter for for some of the dirt ballers out there, because uh, I know I know there's a lot of things that have happened recently. It's all for the for the culture. Is that what they're saying these days for the culture? Like I know I know like a- every black guy around awards season was standing. Get out to the movie of the year. Every black guy was like Black Panther. You got to see it. I'm moving to Wakanda. Do even black people like like it, it's not possible that black people, even black people like the Charles Spike Samuel L. Jackson commercials, right? Because those are the wor- those commercials give my fucking face, my eyes and ears AIDS. Why are they so bad? Because they're uh, awkward as shit. First of all, Spike Lee's the most unlikable person on the planet Earth. 
Samuel L. Jackson is like there going like, what the fuck am I doing with this? these two? But the other two are Char- so likable. Yeah, and then, yeah, but then Charles is like reading cue cards. And like they make Charles the star of the commercial. He's like the only one without acting experience is the one that has all the lines. Did you watch Samuel L. Jackson with the crew? No. The TBS crew? No. Was he talking about it? It was uncomfortable too. So they brought Samuel L. Jackson in between the first and second game. Onto the set down in San Antonio. Okay. And he was straight up dressed like the Joker. That's why I, I saw that. I saw it, yeah. I was like, oh, I, I got to pull this. And I actually thought of you. I was like, Prano's going to like this because he's dressed like Jack Nicholson from, uh, you know, the Michael Keaton Batman, the first one. It was just, it was uncomfortable too. And they're asking him, they're discussing commercials. I'm like, what are we promoting here? Yeah. And one of the questions was to Samuel Jackson, if Charles... Could, had to play any character of any of your movies, who would it be? And Samuel Jackson just goes, at first, I don't know, and it was uncomfortable. He goes, a pilot from Snakes on the Plane. It was just, I'm like, guys, this is so, fo- what are we, for? we're forcing commercials now? Like, you're forcing discussing commercials yeah. on a set of a basketball game. I mean, obviously, uh, Charles Barkley uh, as Ving Rhames' character in fucking Pulp Fiction <laughs> would be nice. I'm about to go medieval on your ass. It's, it's going to be terrible. Oh, man. Yeah. R.I.P. Sister Jean. Yeah. I did get. I did, I did. did buy her bobblehead, though. Yeah, it's coming. It's great because three years from now, people will be like, who's this? Yeah. Like, you remember Sister Jean, the Loyola run? Here's the worst part. I don't think it's going to come out till May. What? The bobblehead? The bobblehead. The bobblehead's not going to arrive till May? Yeah, like, I pre-ordered. I was one of the first ones. So I wanted to add it here in the Smut Studio. I actually put my own, not even Thustle, I put my own money into this. You're goddamn right you did. Because I knew you wouldn't approve. Yeah, yeah you have to, they, we have to have, it's like a, a fucking nuclear sub. Like, you need to turn both keys to spend Thust <laughs> fund on bobbleheads. I knew you wouldn't approve of a $30 purchase of Sister Jean. Yeah. Which also looks without the herpes. I, I had to get one last dig in there, Prano. I, I know how you feel about that. Yeah. I didn't make one herpes joke this weekend. Thank you. Are you I proud of me? That. Yeah. You're like, I, I did fucking drag Sister Jean all weekend. I just didn't do it with herpes <laughs> jokes. I was giggling to myself. I pulled, you know that Mac and Me clip? Did you see the one I pulled? No. Of him going off the wheelchair no. into the water? Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that was from Mac and Me. Yeah. Who the fuck's Mac and Me? I don't know. But it's the funniest fucking clip on YouTube. And my buddy showed it to me a few years ago. And I remembered that clip. And I'm like, I'm going to film. I'm, I'm going to pull this. From my phone. I'm going to fill my computer from my Were phone. Were you low-key hoping that they lost so you could just, like, drag Sister Jean? No, I wasn't. But then as they started to lose, I was like, ah, oh, let's R.I.P. Sister Jean. <laughs> like, let's just destroy this woman. And then at the fact that it was Easter weekend, I was like, come on, lady. Yeah. Let's be honest here. Like, Easter weekend, Jesus rises from the dead, you're dying. Like, there's just... <laughs> There's too much savage. There's too much comedy going Poor on here. Poor Sister Jean. Poor Sister Jean. You know what Sister Jean could use for some of that uh, facial hair she has? <laughs> Harry's razors. There you go. It's, it's good for men and women. Yeah. No discrimination from Harry's no. razors. If you're if you're an old nun with a mustache, yeah. Kiss some players on the mouth after every game. Mm. Clean up that upper lip. I need to shave. I I did put a fresh blade on Thursday. Got a fresh hairy shave. Isn't that the best when you get a brand new blade, Prano? I just I just put a new blade on myself because when I uh, when I have the beard, I got to keep the neck looking sharp. Yeah, so you got to have the you have to have the sharpest beard uh, blade available for just the neck area. Harry's knows the quality of their blades. They know so much that they created a trial offer, which you can claim by going to Harry's.com forward slash dirty. These guys got it all figured out, guys. You can you can get it at such a great price. So get a thirteen dollar value trial set that comes with everything you need for a close, comfortable shave. Listen to this: the weighted, ergonomic handle, mm-hmm. the five blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, a travel blade cover. Oh my God, that sounds amazing! All you dirt balls can redeem your trial set at Harry's.com forward slash dirty so make sure you go to redeem your offer and let them know that i sent you to support the show and this is a great way to support the show guys just go to harrys.com forward slash dirty 
and you get all that great stuff from our friends at Harry's. Okay, Prano, we got to talk a little NBA. Yeah. You, my friend, have been one to talk about this Kevin Durant theory you have. I, it, yeah, it's not so much a theory as, and I, I'm going to preface it by saying, like, I've always been a Kevin Durant fan. I like Kevin Durant. I think Kevin Durant is the second best basketball player on planet Earth right now. I think Kevin Durant has uh, been disrespected a little bit the way people have just gone from, you know, it's like now the talks like LeBron and Harden and Giannis and fucking like Kevin Durant. I know he went to the Warriors and I've been critical of him going to the Warriors and joining a record breaking team and whatever. And everybody took shots at Kevin Durant, us included, when he had. I mean, he had burner Twitter accounts that he was defending himself. But that uh, the burner Twitter accounts is factoring into this theory that I have now retrospectively. I listened to the two part Bill Simmons podcast that he did recently, and I've listened to every podcast that Kevin Durant has done with Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons has basically become his like go to guy when he wants to talk about shit. And I think he's been fantastic. And it's actually only made me more of a Kevin Durant fan listening to him on Simmons. Let me ask you this. When he does Simmons, is he doing this via phone or in person? In person. Okay. So it's always like when they're in L.A. or if Bill happens to be up there or like I don't know if this one was when they were when Bill was in Texas for South by Southwest or whatever. But they make it happen. And he's done multiple like this year. And I think they've always been great. And he's always yeah. been he's always been really cool about talking about different shit about talking what he's going through uh this two-part episode he comes off so fucking weird so sensitive so like he's triggered he's upset by everything multiple times like bill will be like oh you know i got you as like one of the top three basketball players in the world he's like don't do that don't rank people and he's like, what? And he's like, that's he's like, it's kind of what I do. I'm Bill Simmons. Like, I have a whole book of ranking basketball players. He's like, yeah, you fucking bitch ass blog boys. That's what you like doing. Like ranking us against each other. He must say blog boys 30 times. He goes after everybody that blogs about basketball. He says none of these people watch it. He he attacks Nick Wright and Shannon Sharp, two guys who are have been outspoken LeBron guys, which is like was uncomfortable to hear. He opens the whole interview by saying, uh, like, Bill's like, it's got, you know, they're talking about how they kind of had a down year by their standards. And Bill has had a theory for a while that Steve Kerr kind of let them off the hook for having a year like this by saying it's hard to, you know, go to three finals in a row. And uh, he's like, like he set the tone. Yeah. And, and Bill is asking about that. And he's like, yeah, it is hard when everybody loads up to beat you which I almost pulled my car off the road when I heard that. I'm like, when everybody loads up to beat you, you joined the 73 and Warriors team. And people are loading up to beat you? Yeah. Like, you are the loading up to beat. Like, you're talking about you. He says blog boys like 50 times. He keeps cutting off Bill anytime, like, compares. And then he freaks out. Bill's talking about uh, the all-NBA team. And he's like, he's like, I think there's four spots that are pretty much locked in. And he's like, the fifth one's up for grabs. He's like, oh, yeah, who do you got? And he's like, well, Anthony Davis at center, you and LeBron at forwards, Harden at one guard. And he's like, it's the other guard. And he's like, not Steph. And Bill's like, well, no player has ever made any NBA team, first, second, or third all-NBA team playing less than 50 games. And he's like, oh, so you don't know what Steph can do? And he's like, he's like standing so hard for Steph, who is currently hurt, is going to play less than 50 games. If you listen to it, he cuts Bill off so many times in, like, super awkward fashion. Now, I take that. I put it with the day after I heard it, he got ejected. I don't know if you saw him, like, call a ref. Like, he's like, call a foul, you fucking bitch. And it's like, whoa, what is happening? And then between that and the burner accounts, the podcast, like, I don't, like, all these things separately don't make me aren't weird. But all of them together makes me think, like, Kevin Durant's cracking up a little bit. Like, I think he's – I think the pressure is getting to Kevin Durant. I think he hears people saying, 
oh, Steph has been hurt a lot of the season, and suddenly the Warriors are going to finish six games back and not cruise to the Western Conference Finals. And I think he's thinking, oh, like suddenly he thinks everybody that's talking about basketball on the Internet doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about, which granted a lot of people don't. Yeah. But, but suddenly he's super concerned what everybody thinks. And I think well, I, obviously he's concerned. I mean, he had fake Twitter accounts. Yes. Yeah. But I think he is even more than other people are saying. Like, I don't hear a lot of people saying like, oh, Kevin Durant can't carry this team alone. But Kevin Durant can't carry this team alone. Well, we'll see. Right. Come playoffs. Right. But uh, my point is he leads the league in ejections. He's fucking flipping out on the court regularly. He's got he had fake Twitter accounts to defend himself. He's like he's like kind of cracking up on this podcast. I think I, I'm I'm doing a Prano predicts. I think Prano my Prano prediction is five years from now, eight years from now, two years after he's retired, we're gonna hear like the Kevin Durant struggles with depression thing. Like I think Kevin Durant has, like I think Kevin Durant has issues that is just starting to peak out in different ways. What I always find interesting, whether it's Kevin Durant or a celebrity, like when you get to his level, he's not just a star NBA player. He, like you said, he's like all time yeah. star. Yeah, we're, we're talking one of the all time best. We all get affected by our critics. I don't care what anybody says. I get affected. You get affected. We all get affected at times by people on Twitter. But YouTube comments, iTunes reviews, you name it. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. But what I always find amazing about somebody like him, Prano, is when you get to that level, like like comparable, it, it would be like Chris Rock getting bothered to create a fake Twitter account. I think I, I know for me, I've already thought like if I it would be like if, if it would be like if, but you know, you make a good point, and and I was talking to some people about it. And they're like, ah, he's always disliked critics and stuff like that. Like, this is this is the equivalent of Chris Rock going on Jimmy Kimmel to promote his special and then being like, fucking critics. Yeah. Critics don't know shit. Critic, like, cri critic ass, critic ass, blog boy critics. You're like, dude, relax. I just, I find it interesting because I just wouldn't care. You know what I'm saying? When, you, when you're that big... Who gives a shit? I, I've already said this. If I got so big, I take Donald Glover, for example. I think he just got back on. I, I respect somebody like him. He got off Twitter because he's so big, and he's like, fuck it. I'm so talented in so many different facets from music to comedy to writing to you name it. He just said, I don't need this shit. And for me personally, as much as I love Twitter, I would love to not have to do it. Yeah. Right? Because – because but the thing is, and you know, so so why does he care? That's right. what I don't get it. You know what but that also, shows? I compare that he's him. He's so insecure, dude. I, I also compare him to LeBron, and people are always like, whenever you compare people to LeBron, or ever you compare people to Michael Jordan, people are like, oh yeah, but that's LeBron. But it's like, I'm not talking about comparing Demar Derozan to LeBron. I'm talking about comparing Kevin Durant, which you go back to last June, people are going like, ah, oh, he took the torch. He took the torch. Like, yeah. if you're out there saying he took the torch, then comparing him to LeBron isn't – like, every single tweet about LeBron, open it. Like, he just he just broke the record that Michael Jordan had set for most double-digit – consecutive double-digit games. Yeah. Just open that tweet that says LeBron has more double-digit games consecutive than anybody. Everybody's like, LeBron's a fucking bitch. He'll never be Michael Jordan. You never see him being, like, flipping out about it. And or being like fucking Twitter, fuck, fuck Twitter. It's like Kevin Durant again. All these things separately don't have me concerned. But the fact that he's like flipping out on a podcast and getting ejected more than anybody in the NBA, all while Steph's out, and suddenly they're not like the best team in basketball. Like I honestly don't, and I don't think this has anything to do with his skill as a basketball player. But yo, if if people can get in your head that easily. Like, you're not like th that. That question that makes me question: Could you be like? Can you be trusted to be that guy? Like, all of this stuff together goes. Yo, Steph's out. I'm taking the Warriors, or I'm taking the Rockets. You know what I mean? 
I think it also shows that he deep down, and this is just from me piecing everything together, what you're saying now. I think it shows he knows he made a bitch move that by going to Golden State. Right. Because I don't – you could – maybe he did. Was he doing this stuff when he was at OKC? Well, now we don't know, right? Because I don't – you know, I don't know. I don't remember. At least it wasn't in the news. Right. I mean, he could have had fake Twitter accounts. We don't know. But that was part of the thing about being under – he was – so they were sort of under the radar in OKC. Yeah, and small you know, market. Everybody blamed – when, when shit went sideways in OKC, it was always like, can Russ and KD play together? It was always kind of on Russ. It was never really like, everybody was just like, KD's the best, yeah. second best player in the league. Like, now it's a matter of like, is there enough ball sharing? Is it whatever? And he was like, I'm out. I need a change. Fine. Whatever. He went to a championship team. Whatever. Uh, but, like, I feel like he's concerned. Like, I think right now he's concerned that people are saying... Like, yo, LeBron has dragged Matthew Delvadova to finals. He's dragged Mo Williams to finals. You have Clay. You have Draymond. You have a great roster, and Steph's out, and you guys are struggling. And, like, no one's even really saying it. I think he's— He knows it. He knows it. Yeah. And— Deep down, he knows it. And the way he's read, like, I, you know, I know that there are talking heads who are always going to talk shit. Yeah. Like, there's always going to be a Skip Bayless, and there's always going to be a, a Shannon Sharp and Nick Wright and all those guys. But, like, for you to be flipping out about it makes me question, like, I'm saying, if if they're not at full strength, I'm not going like, oh, Kevin Durant's got this. Like, I'll take the, I'll take the Rockets. Yeah. Well, and, and what you're saying, I've been, you know, all year adamant. There's no way the Warriors lose. There's no way. But shit, man, and I haven't heard the podcast, but you piecing all these things together makes me think, yeah, he's got some shit going on, which then might affect him in the playoffs. Dude, I'll say this. Again, I listen to all of the podcasts he's done. I've listened to all the podcasts that Kerr's done with Simmons. And it makes you, like, I've never, I don't have any you know problem with Steve Kerr, but when you listen to it, you go like, man, I like Steve Kerr. Like, yeah. He's a good guy. When I listen to it, I go, I like Kevin Durant. Like, he has an explanation for the shit that he's done. But this particular two-part episode, I was like, yo, Kevin Durant is pretty fucking prickly right now. And I don't get what there is to be fucking prickly about. You're still a millionaire. You're still a fucking top two player in basketball. So your team's not like, you're, you're arguably, you know, a, a fifth best player in the league. And the second best player on your team is out. Like, it's cool that you're not playing well you know what i mean it's it's, it's cool like, by the way they are playing well it's cool that you're not the one seed who yeah. cares that thing is like who cares get steph healthy for the playoffs you got the two seed who gives a shit why are you so fucking freaked out fucking bitch ass blog boys i'm like geez relax kevin and now i am that guy but fucking like i'm i'm going like i'm not a blog boy but i'm going for it like i'm just studying human nature and like so he would consider a guy, you know, like who we had Zach Harper on the show. He would consider him a bitch ass blog. Boy. He's talking about like people paying too much attention to like, you know, f shooting percentage and like uh, like the the advanced stats. And it's like, dude, the other thing is by by all advanced stats, Kevin Durant's even better. Yeah. Like the the advanced stats just say you're even that much of a better player. Well, There's not advanced stats to say like Kevin Durant's overrated. Well, I do think there is and I think you said that earlier. There is a truth. There is some sort of truth to the overanalyzation and everyone because of technology having the ability to critique and blog Absolutely. And, and everyone's stupid opinion matters when so many people's opinions whether it's sports, politics, pop culture whatever are just awful opinions absolutely and look i'm the king of the eye test yeah I'll, I'll believe the eye test over the fucking you know the stats all day i'm a, i'm a i'm the guy who watches the nba and watches lebron james and i go where where you know less smart basketball viewers are like lebron wilts in the big moment i'm like lebron just makes the right play all the time 
You think that the right play should be the star should take the shot. He's like the right play should be passing it to Danielle Marshall if he's open in the corner, passing it to Kyle Korver if he's open in the corner. It's the right play. Oh, he's a bitch. It's like, no, he's just fucking super smart, and he always makes the right play. Now, in the end, if that doesn't work out, he looks bad. He looks like an asshole. Yeah. But but I'm a, I am the king of the eye test. And the eye test and the advanced stats say Kevin Durant's the second best player in fucking basketball. Sure. So just relax, dude. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Like, he really – and I, you know, man, it's just – to me, I go – the way people talk about LeBron, the way people go, oh, Le bitch, oh, he doesn't have the killer instinct, oh, he's he's a pussy. It's like – But I also this think – This is what – this is kind of – LeBron's, showing that hand a little LeBron's bit. LeBron's used to it, though, too. I, I think that's something can be said for that. You know, LeBron instantly became the villain when he went to the Heat in what? 2000, when was that? 10, 12, yeah. when was it? Yeah, 2010. 2010, right? So LeBron's basically been the villain. But just, but my point is, and again. For eight years. Now, yeah. this is still kind of newer for Kevin Durant. Right. And my, but, like, I don't even think Kevin Durant's a villain. Like, I don't think people hate the Warriors the way they hated the Heat. I agree. And here's the other thing. And again, I'm going to say it. I'm going to reiterate because people are going to go, oh, but you're fucking comparing him to LeBron. Like, yeah, he, he's the only one you can compare to LeBron. He's the only one that's in that level. Like, there's, there's so few guys that are in that level. Like, James Harden hasn't won a championship. He hasn't won an MVP yet. Like, Russell Westbrook won an MVP. But, he like, Le, right, like right now it's like LeBron, Steph, and KD are the only ones that have, like, championships, MVPs, like, our big names, our big stars, have the big shoe. Yeah. So they're the only ones that you can compare how their lives are in the NBA. If LeBron James was caught on audio telling a fucking referee, call a foul, you fucking bitch, and he led the league in ejections, it would be the story of the year. LeBron is cracking up. Why is LeBron being such an asshole? Why is LeBron so angry? Kevin Durant has been ejected for more games this year than LeBron's been ejected. Like, in his career, LeBron James has been ejected from, like, six games. Kevin Durant has been ejected from, like, five games this season. Could you imagine if they caught LeBron on audio telling – like, people go, oh, he's a fucking whiny bitch. It's like, dude, Kevin Durant stopping play, getting in refs' faces – cursing them out, getting ejected, leading the league in technicals and ejections. Like, dude, LeBron would be on a cross. Like, he'd be, he'd be fucking full Jesus Easter. Like, he'd be, he'd be dead. They would have fucking crucified the dude. Yeah. And it's like, no, you have to be held at that level because you're, you're the only guy who's on that level with him. If LeBron James was acting like this, he'd be fu- – it would be, it'd be tabloids. And people are just like, oh, that's just Kevin Durant. Like, okay. I think Kevin Durant's cracking up. Now I'm going to have to check that out. You, I, yeah, I, I know it's like, you know, you don't want to tell listeners of our podcast, like, hey, go listen to the three-hour yeah, Simmons fine. interview. It doesn't but bother like, me. But, like, if you listen to it and you don't think something's off about him, I really don't, like, I don't know what to tell you if you, if you can listen to it and not be like, oh, he's being really weird. Yeah. That's just what I thought. I go, this is really fucking weird. I didn't get it. As a guy who who's blogged from time to f- time, I'm offended. Yeah. Apparently, I'm a blog boy. But look, I'm an NBA fan. I the when I bet on the NBA, normally it's during the playoffs, and this is gonna affect when we get to you know the playoff preview. This is gonna affect my predictions. This is gonna affect the way I gamble. This is gonna affect the way I root for the NBA because it was just fucking weird. Well. You brought up the playoffs. Six games, about six games for most teams left in the regular yep. season. I want the Cavs to drop. They're currently a three. Yeah. But they have the they have the advantage over uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia head to head. So they're a three seed, even though they have the same record, I believe. I want the Cavs to drop to a four because I would love to see a second round matchup against Toronto. Okay. I just want to see Toronto get their ass kicked. Like not even make the final the the Eastern Conference Finals. But now who would that match them up with if they dropped to the four? Who's five currently? Is that Washington? No, Wa- Washington's Wa- six. Washington's six. Let me pull it up here. 
Trevor, you got this? Okay, never mind. I got it. Uh, Indiana, a five. Right. Indiana's a tougher series for them than than Washington would be for sure. For sure. I mean, I'm I, I hear what you're saying, but like I'm also I, I wouldn't hate them finishing a three, ha- getting to play Washington, cruising through that, getting to play Boston in the second round. I don't know why. I just want to I just like seeing and you Canadian, don't, I know what you want. You don't want the Raptors to even make it to the Eastern Conference yes. Finals. That's what you don't want. Well, because and Canadians are the I always say this, they're the friendliest, nicest people. That's all a ruse, though. Is it? They're secretly fucked up. Well, uh, stereo- yeah, I'll stereotype them as nice people, but the the fanboys that come out every year on Toronto, I just it just I just love seeing them get owned. I don't know why, and I just yeah. love seeing Drake look all fucking stupid sitting uh, courtside, and they you know they always show outside the Air Canada Center. Yeah, with all those fans wearing their Vince Carter yeah, so that's, throwbacks. That's the answer. You just don't even want them making the Eastern Conference Finals. That's, that's exactly what it is. So you'd so rather... We, so we can get that... The, he's maybe, what, 14 now? That fanboy who calls our show? Yeah. Hey, guys, you know who it is? You it's, definitely know who it is. You definitely know it is. I just got my first pube. The Toronto Raptors are making it all the way I this year. I have a few pubes now. I call my dick area the six because I have six pubes. I was watching Rachel McNichols, and she was saying that the Raptors are a force to reckon with. Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, this is our year. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be did against I call her McNichols? It. Yeah, you did. I, 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 I let it go. <laughs> um, Fuck her, by the way. Rachel Nichols? I just, oh, yeah. I've always hated Rachel Nichols. Rachel Nichols, ESPN. Where is she now? ESPN. She's back? Yeah. Didn't she leave for a while? The fact that she, the fact that she gets work, con, I'll just say this: condoms are for anybody who works with her, interviews her, or employs her. I'll just say that much about Rachel Nichols. We ain't about that life here at Dirty Sports. Uh, father Mike Nichols, mother, uh, m- um, mom-in-law, stepmom is uh, is the fucking chick from uh. Like Dateline, not Dateline, uh, fucking whatever. You know who I'm talking about. She's connected. Yeah. She's in the biz. Her mom, uh, yeah, her stepmom's fucking, God, why am I blanking? Diane Sawyer? Diane Sawyer. That's her stepmom. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. And One, Mike Nichols, who's like huge director. Dude, we've said this before, but I'll say it again. There's nothing interesting about her. There's nothing. No. Like people, when she pops up my Twitter timeline, I get angry seeing people knowing that people follow her and respond to her you know what i'm saying like th- yeah. there's th- like like, t- like take this for example just let's just talk about last week real quick we bring in dennis franks who isn't like a big name Probably or anything like, kevin durant's already upset that you're trashing rachel nichols like this like fucking blog boy what you fucking know about being on tv fucking ass Vimo ass blog boy, Vimo ass using fucking blog boy. But le- but let me, I want to toot our own horn for a minute because, like, we bring in Dennis Franks, and I saw some really appreciative comments on Instagram, YouTube, and and I appreciate that from all the dirt balls. It's like this dude isn't a name. He played in the seventies, but he gave us some amazing nuggets, some great stories. I just see someone like her, and I think, what the fuck are you giving? You don't have a brother who jerks off on turtles. Yeah. You know, you're not going to Arizona to thust the bumble date. Like, you're not interesting. Fuck Rachel Nichols. I'm with you. I've always hated Rachel Nichols. Glad I got that out. I think we've ranted on Rachel Nichols before, too. For sure we have. Yeah. I know we have. NFL? Yeah. There's just one story I, I, I want to talk about. Okay. This Marquette King being cut. Because he's a punter and everyone's talking about it. And obviously he's a showman. He's flamboyant. I like the guy. I, I follow him on social media. He, he's Statistically, he's a really good punter. Yeah. But my question to you, Joe Prano, is does that fucking matter? No. Uh, it's just a money decision, right? Yeah. And... A good punter, no doubt about it, it can be something that's extremely helpful. But you can get a good punter for cheap. Like Marquette King 
is a good punter. I think he signed a five-year, sixteen million dollar deal. Yeah, like he's a good punter, but high he's high Right, but he's also like part of it. Part of his deal is that he is that personality, and I mean I've seen it before, dude. Like, I mean the Giants cut Weatherford when he was the yeah. our, our punter guy, the ripped guy. Yeah, the yeah the ripped guy and. They cut him, and it was like, whoa, what the fuck? And then they went to Brad Wing. And now, to be fair, Brad Wing was not nearly as good as Weatherford, but you get what you pay for, you know? But in the end, it's like John Gruden's like, I need that money for somewhere else right now. We'll, we'll, we can find a punter like to do what Marquette King did, and we can find him to do it for $600,000. But not just a financial matter. They, you know, Gruden had been critical of him calling Raiders games. Right. On Monday Night Football, and now they're saying a lot of people are, are already look. I'm not ready to call Gruden out because let the season play out. But people are saying, oh, he's trying to clean house, you know, with the roster. He 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 didn't want that flamboyant type showman, you know, who's a punter. He doesn't want that. But my thing is this: he kept Marshawn around, yeah, which shows, you know, Marshawn has a whole. I don't want to use the word baggage because Marshawn's not baggage, but he's got a whole persona. And per, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, it, dude, it, it, it's all of that stuff together. But first and foremost, it's money. Yeah. First and foremost, it's money. Like it, it goes back to the same thing. You know, we're talking about last episode. We're talking about the Giants are talking about trading Odell Beckham. Uh, you know, arguably the best receiver ever at his age through four years. Well, they weren't talking about trading him last year. Why? Because now he wants $20 million. Yeah. So that's why it's even up in the air. When this guy's on his rookie deal, we don't care if he murders Josh Norman. Like, this dude's on his rookie deal, and he's setting fucking receiving records. Like, he can be here. Now when he wants $20 million, it's like, uh, do we want to deal? And that's when they start spinning it. Do we want to deal with the headache? Is, he, is, is it worth putting up with the drama? It, look, I, Marquette King has been in no way that I know of a you know drama in the locker room but at the same time it's like maybe maybe John Gruden doesn't want a guy who is a dancing punter like you don't necessarily want a guy that your fans want to see on the field that you never want to see on the field yeah like he's like man I hope we never punt I do enjoy watching him yeah it's great it's cool good for him but it's also but you're also a punter yeah so like keep things in perspective well take the rams punter yeah sam hecker fantastic probably the it was probably the best last year yeah. right oh he is the best he's the best hands down. i don't know statistically but he's the best hands down because of what he's able to do like even in you know when it's a tight punt situation yeah. and like all of what he does with spinning the ball and how he's dropping it it's like he's doing shit other people aren't doing and he's the dad who's picking up the paper at 6 a.m to mow the lawn yeah yeah exactly and they didn't punt that much yeah so good Someone will pick up King, though. Probably. He's a good punter. But now he's been released, so now he's not a $16 million contract anymore. Yeah. Do you want to talk about this hockey story? We're going to get the calls. There was some controversy on Twitter. I put out the smut signal that we're going to do calls again. No Trevor, but we're going to do calls. Yeah. You just I mean, look, I fired Trevor, and it wasn't easy. Tears were shed. And... <laughs> You keep bringing it up, though. I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm, just I'm trying being a dick. I'm I know. Dick. This is why. This I'm is why. This is why. Even I, I'll guarantee you right now. Even though I was the one that had to let Trevor go, I bet you he still likes me more. He probably does. Cause you're like fucking basking in him being fired. Meanwhile, I'm like, I'm not dude, basking. I'm, I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I'm it's not just like, basking. Like you lost an episode. It can't happen. He can. I told only, him I tried to fire you too, but he can watch the show from outside the window on a ladder sometimes. <laughs> You need we get you need we get money for people to watch the show. Eddie, you know Eddie Ift used to do that. Shaking your head no. I maybe yeah. I'm shaking my head at like you can lay in my bed. I'm shaking my head because like I didn't really want to. You know I feel like now I'm gonna get. But Trevor is well liked. Trevor won Dirtball Madness. I like Trevor. I told Trevor I'd still like to hang out with him, uh, but you know. Like, I don't I, dislike Trevor. I know, but now I feel like now you keep it keeps coming up the way you're like laughing about it and cackling at the dude's <laughs> misfortune. 
<laughs> that now I feel like I'm going to get f- feedback on Twitter, like, why the fuck did you fire Trevor? And it's like, guys, it just had to happen. Yeah. It was, you can't, you can't it was a business decision. Yeah, yeah. So I'm treating Trevor kind of like how I treated Sister Jean when she took yeah, that out. Yeah, it's just like, look, Trevor's a nice kid. Trevor, huh? if you come in here with a herpes sore and in a wheelchair, you'll be accepted back. I Look, can we just move on to the, the, <laughs> the hockey story? Love you, Trevor. I I did connect with Alexis. Remember her, our yeah, hockey correspondent? Yeah. Uh, uh, I might have to fire her soon, too. Really? Yeah, I'm cleaning the house. I'm going full Gruden on this place. Interesting move. Dancing hockey correspondent, you're out. I kind of like you being the bad cop. Yeah. I have to be the bad cop all the time. Uh, I, we got to talk about this story, and I'm sure we might talk about it, because I said let's get a call this week. Yeah. Playoffs are here, or they're coming. I don't fucking know. I don't follow the NHL. What is this, <laughs> fucking Game of Thrones? The playoffs <laughs> are coming. <laughs> oh, they're coming, all right. But this story is just amazing that this 36-year-old accountant yep. played goalie for the Chicago Blackhawks this week. Yeah, and I didn't see all the details of it, but he's some sort of emergency. Was He, he was just signed at the last minute? Yeah, do you know? I didn't know this even existed. So he had to play for 14 minutes this week. He's an accountant recreational hockey player. His name's Scott Foster. He served as an emergency goalie for the Blackhawks on Thursday during a home game. So basically, their main goalie got hurt last year. He's been out. Yeah. They've had a backup. And this guy has always been on call. I'm not exaggerating. Like he's, he's like on yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. And I've heard this from other teams, too. Like, there was another guy who was like, like his jersey said emergency or something like that. Like, there's these guys who are just like kind of the next man up, but they just have regular lives. Well, this is what I got the New York Times article. It says, Foster had been tapped as an emergency goalie from time to time, which meant showing up to the Blackhawks' home games and usually sitting in the press box and eating free food. That's great. <laughs> but I've heard if this like, guy gets— I've heard, I've heard if 14 goalies for the New Jersey Devils die, that Kyle Aronofsky will play goalie as Ric Flair. <laughs> 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 now, that's something I would watch. Yeah. So, the the backup goalie gets hurt. There's 14 minutes to go in the game Thursday, and this dude comes in. And he apparently played pretty well. But what's interesting is he didn't even play, like, he hasn't played in 10 years. He played right. for Western Michigan. Right. It's not like he was in a It's like the equivalent of being, like, a bullpen catcher and then start suddenly, like, catching for the team. It's like you're not even in the organization. That's what I'm saying. As a catcher. You're a guy who just, like, catches in the bullpen and this isn't hey you played in the minors two years ago yeah you're still kind of relatively you know fresh with this bro you've been playing 10 years like you're doing taxes yeah we're gonna ha- we'll have to talk to alexis about this because like you know guys get hurt in other sports and there is minor leagues of hockey you would think when the one goalie goes down they like bring the next goalie up i love this system though from triple a yeah i love this yeah but that's the thing, isn't it affiliate? Like the 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 this minor. Is, this league. is like this. You know, we should have this system. I was just we thinking have, that we should have had like Shabelli fly down. It's like, sorry, Trevor was fired, and you're just like the emergency intern. I know you're in school, but like we need you here. Free food's involved. He's like, I'll be right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad. Shabelli was in town all weekend. Yeah. And did you text with him? Yeah, I said sadly I'm gone. See, this is. You know, no, he he was gone tonight. Oh uh, yeah, I know he was gone tonight. But uh, but he he wasn't texting me. See, you're 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 Shabelli's boy, Trevor and I. We had a thing, and that's why I had to fire him. Uh, that's why I was the one that had to, you know, pull the guillotine. But uh, Shabelli guillotine or guillotine, either one. You guillotine. Can, you can yeah. actually say guillotine. I Come think on. I think it's a Pranoism right guillotine. there. Guillotine. It's like th- listen. I'm honest, French, bro. Yeah, you're French. Like yeah, you fucking we're go. <laughs> you, you, do you order croissants? <laughs> like, <come on. laughs> can you really say croissant? I mean, let's be honest. It's a French word. I I'm actually the next time I walk across the street to get my uh my breakfast croissant. Yeah, I'm gonna say it like that to the Mexican. Yeah, you should. He's like, okay. Can I have a croissant? <laughs> um, yeah. So Shabelli never texts me. I saw he was at the Dodgers game. Yeah. I saw he was at the soccer game. He does text me. Yeah. So what are you saying? We each have our own favorites now? Yeah, although I don't think I have one anymore because I just fired mine. So. Well, if he hears this, which he probably won't, you will then probably be the favorite after I've shot on him so much. Yeah. Trevor knows I love him. Well, Prano, 
like I just said, we're going to get to some calls. But before we do that, I want to let the Dirtballs know that we're doing a great deal with our friends at DonkeyTees.com. Donk, there, I've already messed it up. Yeah. DonkeyTees.com. Yeah, it's funny. The last uh, episode we did that was lost. Um, which is which is available on we, YouTube. Yeah, it was, uh, we did a Donkey Tees ad. And I said that people should go to Donkey Tees and get a T-shirt, a cool T-shirt, so they don't have to wear Dilly Dilly T-shirts. And then somebody tagged me and said they actually sell Dilly Dilly T-shirts. They sell everything. They sell everything. Bro, they, they have a Maverick Goose. I'm just seeing you pull it up right now. Maverick Goose 20. They have a Ch Chappelle Show Red Balls energy yeah. drink shirt. Yeah. So what I love about Donkey Tees, and we love them because they make our shirts, guys. Yeah, they this make is, the dirty sports gear. They design all our shirts. Any If you own... Thus the process, if you own a Z-Quok, if you own a Prezingo, they make them, they design them. They're a great company. And if you go to DonkeyTees.com, they have all the shirts, whether it's sports, humor, pop culture. And we have a deal running. If you drop promo code DIRTY, you get free shipping. And, li and like you said, they got great shirts. You saw the... the they have movie shirts, TV shirts, sports shirts... Pop all, culture. All kinds of pop culture shit. It's it's great. Humor, you name it, guys. So go to Donkey Tees, and that's just is, the word think, donkey. Is that a McDowell's shirt I see right there? That is. From Coming to America. So great. And look, they have three to five XL. Yeah. So for all you fat Midwesterners out there, yeah. they got you covered. So go to DonkeyTees.com, and that's T-E-E-S.com, just yeah. with donkey. DonkeyTees.com. DonkeyTees.com, drop in promo code DIRTY for free shipping on some of their amazing shirts. And uh, last episode, you were wearing a Bad News Bears, and I was wearing a Cleveland Steamer shirt. Yeah. Which was fitting for me. Classy. Classy Ruther shirt. Okay, let's get to some calls, but let's grab the headphones, Prano. Before we do that, I want to play an amazing song. You know, we just finished Dirtball Madness. Yep. Which apparently everyone, the joke is that Ruther doesn't care about. Yeah. You don't care about it, right? I never said that. Do you know who the final was? Uh, Trevor Ver Gino from Reno. Yeah. Do you know who the final four was? I have no clue. And you only know about that because you, you accused me of throwing shade at Trevor in that finals matchup. But, you know, happens. He was running away with it. He's now the number one ranked well, dirtball. This, 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 this is why I might have issues with dirtball madness. I mean, he's our intern and he's in this. I saw I went against you at one point. Well, that was in the – there was a host bracket. Yeah. Oh, I said, like, what are we doing here? There was a uh, – I, 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 I hung out with Tug on Friday. He was very upset about losing to Yoshi in the co-host bracket. Yeah. And and Cutter was apparently upset about not even being in the co-host bracket. So all kinds of dirtball madness drama. Well, you beat my ass as expected. I did see that. Yeah. Well, I don't. Look, I don't know what to say. It's fine. It is what it is. Good, co good cop, bad cop. That's yeah. how this works. I think Dirtball Madness, uh, uh, just as a last hurrah for old Trevor, we should just have a Trevor Ruther poll. You know, I'm just gonna. I gotta. I gotta learn to just not care about the polls. <laughs> Bitch ass poll blogs. Yeah. Blog polls. Well, longtime listener of the show, Matt Evangelisto. Mm -hmm. Goes to, I believe, Virginia Commonwealth. Made this amazing song. And he sent it when I was in Vegas. Dirtball Idol. Yeah. He, he, when you hear this, you're going to love this. Guys, this is so funny. He sent it when I was in Vegas. So uh -huh. it's one of those, I got the email. I was probably really baked or, you know, high on edibles. And, I, and then I was searching old emails. And then I saw it. And I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. We got to play this on the show. So... Let's take a listen before we do calls to Matt's song. Sorry, I killed everyone's ear. Another episode of Dirty Sports to record. Head to paradise, the smart jack by the shore. Trevor's already pissed at least three times today. Rip. <laughs> Along with Prano comes Bill Walton and Stephen A. 
So let's sit down for an hour or two. We'll talk about some sports. We're all about those stories no one reports. George Brett shits himself while gambling <laughs> in Vegas. Rico's hammered and then he tries to grope some chick. Kellen Winslow in a Target parking lot. Geno Smith gets sucker punched in the jaw. So let's sit down for an hour or two and then we'll take some calls. Stupid ones make rude or want to end it all. From Kentucky started trolling moron. Shabelli still doesn't know remix to ignition. And Max still hasn't paid us what the hell give us our money. Alexis calls us up to tell us about hockey. So let's download the dirty sports and let them know they're supported. Hands down the best podcast ever recorded. So let's raise our glass and drink when Kobe shoots. And let's bring on Sestaro to tell us about the U. Watch a periscope of a kid shitting in a sock. And call up Stanga to hunt down those who piss us off. So let's all learn to thus the process and listen to Andy. Condoms are for pussies. Fantastic. So good. So good. And by the way, I apologize for everyone's ear yeah. drums that just exploded. Is that just going to just blow out speakers? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Matt. That it's was probably going to be kids crying in the back of their parents' cars like, what happened? That was so good. Yeah, great. Set to the classic Green Day tune. Four verses. Yeah. Not one, not two, not three, but four. I'm telling you, I suggested I don't remember if I suggested it on the show or if I suggested it to you off air. I was like, I feel like a dirtball idol should happen. And you were like, no way. They're fucking idiots. They can't fuck. None of them know what the fuck they're doing. I go, Patrick Sullivan wrote a beautiful fucking piano song. You're like, he's the only one. The rest of them couldn't play a fucking kazoo. I'm like, all right, well. I was like, Mata recorded a couple things. You're like, fucking Mata's retarded. Fuck this. I was like, all right, I guess no dirtball idol. But, I mean, we got. Funny, I don't recall that conversation. We have fucking, we have many musical talents out there. Dirtball idol. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's. It would be pretty funny. Where would it be held? Via the phone line. Like, that was good, you know? I I like that song. We get, we get, uh, we get a bad one. That's a no for me, dog. Well, let's do it. Just you and I judging? Sure. Uh, we got to have, like, Tug and Yoshi and, like, people coming in, guest yeah, judges. Yeah, I just feel like the voice, like, we have to turn around on the <laughs> smut couch. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're riding the smut couch backwards. <laughs> it's like this, I'm facing the wall. <laughs> Tug's hitting a button and spinning around. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. We'll get we'll get Laz here as the uh, Christina Aguilera character now that he knows how to hold his microphone properly. Who would be our Paula Abdul? <laughs> Cuz she's that, a lunatic. Yeah. Um trying to think of somebody that's has a pill addiction. Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Maddie be a funny judge. Maddie may be a great Paula Abdul. He's like, it's no the replacements, but it's pretty good. <laughs> Personally, I prefer Motorhead. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Lemmy is God. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. All right, let's get to some calls. It's been a while. It's been over a month, I think. 
I'll try. You know what? I'm gonna start this soft because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to kill anybody. Kill anybody's eardrums. Fun fact: One of the Ramones' cousins lives on my block. <laughs> he plays the Ramones all the time. His last name's not Ramon, though. Uh. Hey guys, it's Wendy in NorCal. I have a question. I was uh, reminiscing over the final four of being at UConn for the original bed and couch burnings and car tippings in uh, 1999, and I'm wondering what kind of sports fanatic celebrations have you guys been a part of that you want to share? Uh, that's all I got for today. Thanks, guys. Stay dirty, and condoms are for Michigan. Okay. So it sounds like Wendy was a part of yeah. the ruckus at, uh, at UConn. Where, where is University of UConn? Is that the stores? Stores. Yeah. It's the middle of fucking nowhere in Connecticut. Did I say where is University of UConn? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's an ultimate Rutherism there. Yeah. Where's Miss University of UConn today? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the sad thing is you went to Lehigh. Yeah. I went to St. Louis University. Yeah. We didn't go to major sports schools. No. Nope. I don't have a Knicks championship in my lifetime. I don't have a uh, – I have a Mets championship, but, like, uh, that was when I was young. Both Giants uh, championships, obviously, I wasn't, like, at the Super Bowl in – and New York City, I, I think that's one thing about New York is New York doesn't give a fuck. Like, no one's going out on the streets and celebrating. Like, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who wins. It doesn't matter the Yankees win. The Mets are like, what? they got to be on the streets celebrating, right? No. I mean, it's like, it is what it is. Like, you know, there's so many fucking people there. Like, think about it. In New York, if a million people are celebrating the Yankees win, the majority of people are not celebrating the Yankees win. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I've been in bars when, you know, big, like, when the Yankees have won World Series. Like, yeah, the bars, like, people are excited, but it's not, it's nothing crazy. So, I don't really have a great one, honestly. Well, I don't either. I mean, same thing. When the Reds won, I was in the third grade. The closest thing that I have to that experience was when Obama won. Fucking Brooklyn. The hipsters in Brooklyn. It was like, it, I, I imagine it was like what it was like when the Red Sox like broke the curse. There were hipsters climbing fucking telephone poles. It was like the, it was like the, it was like what the Eagles were doing, like when Obama won. Oh, that's so funny. And I was just like, guys, this. I, I was like, I, I can't even begin to. I wanted to get a bullhorn, start yelling about the two party system and how nothing's gonna change, but, fucking. That would have been funny. Yeah. I mean, kids were literally fucking. I don't get that skinny jeans climbing fucking telephone. Prano, I don't get that. I, yeah. I just and people probably look at us and think we're nuts when we get all bent out of shape about a team or a coach and or get happy and they well, how do you guys get so? I just to me it's different. I just don't get how people can just get that adamant. I I remember that. I remember when Obama won. I remember people I worked with were like, "Oh my God, he's gonna bring." much change to this world and i'm like no he's not yeah i think he's a good guy but the same way as people were panicking over trump and like you know i mean the amount of people i, I was like doing dirty politics then and I, we were talking about it on our show the amount of people amount of dirt balls i had dirt balls like you're not afraid of nuclear war you're not afraid he's i'm like no i'm not and here we are what's what's happened like, how has your life significantly changed by Donald Trump being president? That's what I always say. That's always my question. At, at, in fact, I said exactly what I said happened. And, and I talked about it with Brett, you know, when Brett was here. Exactly what I said happened. If anything, it's been positive. Suddenly, people are marching about women's rights. People are marching about gay rights. People are marching about gun rights. Suddenly, people are actually doing something. Yeah, it's a good As point. opposed to when Obama was president and kids were fucking being killed in nursery schools. And you were just like, whatever. He'll figure it out after he fills out his March Madness bracket. Yeah. That's a good silver lining. 
It's yeah, a good, it's a good point. People suddenly care about every single thing that the president does, from what he eats to what he tweets yeah. to what he fucking when he sleeps, w- how much he's golfing. No one gave a shit how much Obama was golfing. No one gave a shit that every March he took off, he would go on ESPN. Imagine fucking Donald Trump on fucking ESPN with, filling out a bracket. They'd the be Andy- like, get back to work, you lazy fuck. Yeah. Well, you know, we all know why, too, especially white people. So scared of being called racist. Yeah. I mean, it's true. All right, let's get to uh, an older call. This one's back from March 14th. What's up, boys? It's Joseph calling from the home of 2 Chains, And um, just thought I'd show a little Dirty Sports appreciation this month because I know we got some guys out there who make thousands of dollar bets and don't pay them. Not calling out any names. So, um, took it upon myself to make the dirt balls look a little better. And um, I bought you, I bought Andy, Trevor, Plano, and Maddie. I bought y'all four tickets to the uh, Dodgers Net game on September 3rd. Um, Front row seats out in uh, left center field. So, um, through through Seat Geek, of course. Best ticket out there is. So um, I'll be sending all the tickets via email, or whatever. They send them to me September first, but I'll send you the confirmation through Instagram or whatever, so you know I'm not bullshitting. So um, y'all enjoy the game, boys. Stay dirty. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's so that's Bryson. Bryson's an interesting cat. I'm, I'm gonna do a, a crossover plug here. Bryson will be on tomorrow's Dent Report. Really. He is a southern boy who is a full-time male stripper. Wow. Tours. Tours? 300 dates in 365 days. He, he, he travels. He's a traveling male stripper. Fantastic. Straight up Magic Mike style. That's amazing. And he's a big fan of the, uh, us. His parents apparently are big fans too. Wow. And yeah, he bought us all the way in September. He got us tickets. That's fantastic. For the Mets game. Love Mets, it. Mets Dodgers. Can't wait. Now, Trevor, you will be replaced by Chevelli. That's <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, Trevor's a Dodger fan. He has to come. It'll be Hopefully, we'll hang out with Trevor before then so it's not awkward. Yeah. Be like, hey, haven't seen you in six months, buddy. And that's fucking dope, though. Yeah. Front row, left center field seats. Yeah. He's a male stripper. This was a very interesting episode. He's on the, the full episode. We just interview him. Now, how did this come about? How did you? Maddie did all this. All of it. He takes his clothes off for women. We got to talk to him. You know what the best part is? When you hear the interview, my favorite part is this. Ten minutes in or something, I don't know what part of the interview, I said, I said, Maddie, on air to both of them. I said, Bryson, did he, what's this? Did he, vet, you know, did he vet you at all? Have you ever met Maddie? No. I said, so right now we're sitting in your basement. You let a complete stranger walk into your sister's multi-million dollar mansion. He was th- he was there live? Yes. Blinking guy mean. Well, I so he was here in LA cuz th- he was stripping by here and he's coming S- back by here. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to have to listen to the dent report again. Yeah. So it's a good episode, so check it out. All right, so we only had those calls, but I see we've had some new calls since I put out the uh Oh, uh, we going raw dog? Let's go raw are going, dog. Are we going uh, call screenings or for pussies? Let's go raw dog. I think this is Kyle Aronofsky because I recognize his number. I think. Let's see. What's going on, boys? It's Kyle Aronofsky calling once again from beautiful Thomas River, New Jersey, home of the 1998 Little League World Series champions. Um, I saw something on Twitter, and I have a question for you guys uh, based on it. So someone was saying that, Michael Vick is not a top five black quarterback of all time. I'm wondering what you think about that because I wasn't really around. You know, I wasn't old enough to see like Warren Moon, Randall Cunningham, Steve McNair, um, you know, any of those guys. But you know, is Cam Newton better than uh, Michael Vick was? Was Dominic, you know, Donovan McNabb better? Uh, What about Luther's boy Russell Wilson? You know, Um, where does Vick rank? Because he obviously missed those two years in his prime and after that he never played a full season but he was so dominant early on so uh just wondering what you guys think about that where does Vic rank among the great black quarterbacks of all time also shout out to Matty Goldberg um went to a show in Atlantic City 
got me in for free, put on a great show, and then uh, we went and got some food after the show. Great conversation with my favorite with my favorite Jew on Passover. It was uh, it was appropriate. So hopefully I see Prano soon, and maybe Ruth will come to the East Coast. That's it. Connors are for the New York Rangers. Uh, Kyle, you throwing throwing shots at my Rangers at the end? Damn. Uh, so it's here's what I'll say. It's a good question. It's a great question. Um, let's just let's just go from the top. I think Warren Moon's in the Hall of Fame. Warren Moon's the black, best black quarterback of all time. And he probably didn't go to the NFL soon enough. I, I could be wrong on this. Probably because of racism. Yeah. Right? Uh, like they didn't want to start black quarterbacks. And then you got Steve McNair has a MVP. MVP. Co-MVP. Yeah. He was a fantastic quarterback. Uh, then you got Cam Newton has an MVP and is, you know, statistically is up there with, you know, what he's done in his career so far statistically. Like, he's certainly pacing to be the best black quarterback of all time. So that's three. And then uh, who am I missing? Donovan McNabb. Donovan McNabb. Like, personally, I think Vic was a better quarterback than McNabb. Uh, I'll just say, like, I, I always thought he was better. When he came back to the Eagles, I was like, they're stupid for not starting him. Um, I think had Vic been able to play his whole career, I think he'd probably have not ended up. Like, when he came back, he came back as a backup. He, right, he started on the Eagles. He came back he as came a back. He came back as a backup, but then when he did get the starting nod, yeah, God, he was so good. Do you remember that yeah. one Monday Night Football game against, I believe, yeah. the Redskins? Yeah, yeah, where he set like fucking every record. He was amazing. So, uh, I mean, you got Randall Cunningham, no, but he's not up there. Like to me, what about Russell Wilson? Russell is Russell Wilson black? He's a Berenstein Bear. Yeah. Also, is he's halfway right? Yeah. Like it, technically, I don't know. I don't know either. We're talking a hundred percent. I mean, I'm not look, bust, bust out that ancestry dot com. Yeah, like I'm Russell Wilson's not a black quarterback. Maybe he is. E- either way, even if he is, <laughs> two, <laughs> two white guys deciding yeah. this. I decided for sure. Um, and by the way, it, Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, Carson Wentz. Like there were so many quarterbacks today that I saw got retweeted talking about Jesus. I'm so happy. That my quarterback isn't a guy who's tweeting about the fucking the, the savior rising. He's a today. Jesus guy though. Yeah, Eli Who? is not a Jesus. He doesn't guy. talk about it. Yeah, he's yeah exactly. But he's not a Jesus guy. I've never heard him. Say, I've never heard him thank God once. Well, Brady's not. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers isn't. I don't think G- I don't I don't necessarily think Eli Manning's an atheist or anything. But like he doesn't go. I just want first. I want to thank God. Like he never does that. Doesn't seem like he's very religious. Um. Did, I'm gonna, did you see what I tweeted out? By the way, no. I found this old. I found something which I've tweeted before. <laughs> it's, 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 it's. I'm laughing, thinking about. It. It's this mall in New Jersey from a couple years ago. It's in some ghetto ass mall. <laughs> the Easter Bunny starts fighting people. It's all black people. <laughs> I'm laughing, thinking about. It. And somebody rips off his head. And he's a black guy. <laughs> The Easter Bunny's throwing punches, and of course, what I love about... All right, so here's my ranking. I got (laughs) Moon, McNair, Cam, this black Easter Bunny you're talking about, (laughs) and then Vic. That's my top five. You know know what I love? The thing that's so great about, like, World Star and, like, black videos is it's not just the actual video. It's the reaction. Yeah. You got to watch this, Brano. And and the dude, dude... He like doesn't stop, and he just keeps throwing punches. <laughs> I see that. Would you post it on? You post it on Dirty Sports. No, this is under Andy. Oh Rupert. yeah, yeah. He's just throwing punches. He's got half his Easter Bunny costume on. I'm just like, this shit is so fucking funny. I posted it two years ago. It's from somewhere in New Jersey. Yeah. I don't know, but if you put in Best Black QBs into Google, the names that just come up, which is, I always think the way Google does it, where they'll just show pictures of people. It's usually a pretty good, pretty good assessment. I mean, you got Cam, Vic, Doug Williams, Russell Wilson, Warren Moon, Donovan McNabb, McNair, Kaepernick, Cole Pepper, Cordell Stewart, Robert Griffin III, and then we're getting into James Harris, Tyrod Taylor, Vince Young. So hard drop off, <laughs> hard drop off after the Cordells, Cole Peppers, Kaepernick's, McNair. I think Vic is. I think he's the he's probably the fifth best black quarterback of all time. If you're taking Russell Wilson out. Which I am, because I'm not sure he's black. 
Uh, do we want any more? Do we want to play a little Russian roulette with these last two calls? Yeah, let's do it. We only have two more left. All right, let's do it. Ruther and Prano, what's going on, fellas? Uh, good to have the hotline back up. I missed it. I had the different little spin to the show. But um, just want to give you an update from last year, the Matty Ducks, the Matty Dirty Ducks. Won our first tournament of the year this year. We went undefeated, scored 115 runs, I believe, to other teams, 73. So, I mean, we pretty much just slapped everybody that we went up against. So, um, yeah, there's your update. <laughs> That's all I got for you. Yeah. That's the softball update. The Cincinnati uh, Natty Ducks. Yeah. They're sponsored by Natty Light, I assume. Right. That's well, right. I think Natty. Is that what they are? Or is it just short for Cincinnati? I don't know. <laughs> That's Stolze. I, I, I recognize that. Yeah. 115 runs in a tournament. That's a lot of runs. It's lit, fam. We got to get the Natty Ducks some, uh, some T-shirts, some donkey tees. Get them, get them a custom design. Or you guys can do that. Use promo code Dirty for free shipping. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. There you go. All right, let's do the last call. Hey, what's up, guys? Charlie from Minnesota here. Uh, I just wanted your guys' thoughts on some baseball unwritten rules. So just earlier today, the Twins were up 7 nothing in the uh, ninth, and our starter sure. only gave up one hit. Then the Orioles dude bunted and got on. Uh, after the game, a bunch of the Twins players were upset about that. Just wondering what you guys think. Uh, stay dirty and first. Yeah. Well, that's good. We covered that. But it's fucking stupid because it's not an unwritten rule. Like, you, you can't make up unwritten rules as you fucking go along. Yeah. Like, that's the thing about baseball is, you know, people are rightfully or wrongfully uh, hanging on to some, like, long traditions this is the way it's supposed to be. And look, I get it. Uh, you know, I'm a baseball guy, and I'm also a kind of guy who talks about other leagues. And you gotta, you gotta, you know, get with the times and whatever. And sure, there are things, but it's it's something that's passed down from locker room to locker room, from clubhouse to clubhouse, from older players to younger players. And it's like, however much of that sticks, is however much of that sticks. You know what I mean? And the idea that Brian Dozier was saying, oh, there's veterans in the locker room. They'll tell him. No, they won't because this has nothing to do with anything. Shifts have been happening for fucking five years. Brian Dozier, kill yourself. All right. Those are the dirtball calls. I like that we opened and closed the show with Brian Dozier killing himself. The hotline is 310. Guess we're not having him on the show anytime soon. No, probably not. Hotline is 310. I can't wait, though, for Brian Dozier to respond and be like, the fuck do those podcast boys know? We fuck, fuck podcast boys, fucking bitch-ass fucking podcast boys. Can you imagine if he did that, how you'd be like, wow, Brian Dozer's really fucking lost it. I like that term, podcast boys. 310-359-8365. The hotline is currently open. Leave a call. And keep tweeting our boy Ricky Williams. Lots of great tweets at Ricky Williams. Again, it's at Did you get a reply to the DM? No, and I didn't get a response from the email that I sent. So, uh, come on, Ricky. Reply, Sp Ricky, reply. Yeah. So keep tweeting at Ricky Williams, at Rick the Laureate. And tweet at us. Give us love on Twitter. Follow us. At The Dirty Sports. At Fix Your Life. And at Andy Ruther. JoePano.com for shows. I want to let everybody know that while Andy was away, I was thusting my face off. So I've got a lot of good stuff coming up. I'm actually going to try to fill in all summer long, kind of see some ballparks, see some cities. So here's what we got coming up for, for those of you who are out there. We'll be doing uh, San Francisco and Oakland, the Bay Area in May. Uh, I'll be back up in Tahoe in June. Uh, I'll be back in. They love Prano and Tahoe. I'll be back in New York at the end of June. Uh, maybe some dates in Jersey. Uh, as part of that trip. There you go, Aaron I'll, I'll be up in uh, Washington with uh, Eddie Ift for Bingle Fest in July, Comedy Store in La Jolla in July, and then, of course, we've got our uh, our Chicago Midwest Dirtball Meetup in September. So stay on JoePrano.com because I'm going to try to fill in all those open weeks, too. It's going to be the summer. 
Summer of Prano tour. Summer of Thust. Yeah. Prano style. JoePrano.com, DirtySports.com, AndyRuther.com. Keep dropping those iTunes reviews, guys. Five stars. Just do it. Fuck, I don't care. Leave many stars as you want. Just do it. Just, just the ratings, the stars, it helps. It all helps. So do that. Is there anything else I got to push? I always got to check. Nope, that's it. Love the uh, love the song again, Matt. That was good. Yeah, great job. That was good. All right, uh, Dirt Balls, thanks for listening. And, man, this show went so efficiently. Let's hope I recorded everything. R.I.P. Trevor. Um, if you have any final thoughts for Trevor, obviously he's at Trevor underscore nickel on yeah. Twitter. And, uh, you know, if uh, if you have positive or negative thoughts toward us, those can also be left in an iTunes review. If you're very upset about Trevor leaving, you know, tell us on iTunes. We should play the Sarah McLaughlin song. Yeah. I will remember you. Can somebody put together, like, <laughs> a Sarah McLaughlin uh, song of Trevor, of pictures of Trevor <laughs> and pictures and videos of Trevor? Holding his dogs. <laughs> uh, I feel bad. Do they still play that video, by the way? L- late at night? The Sarah McLaughlin dog video? Uh, yeah, but that's not the song they do for that one, is it? Yeah, I think it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Sad. Making me feel sad, like I just killed Trevor, a, s- a small puppy that was in a shelter that died. because. Well, all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> 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 all right, guys. Thanks for listening to the show. And most importantly, don't forget, condoms are for pussies.